rain. All y'all who had left, come on back to all so. Help us to love like you love. Yes. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, go with us and stand by us, oh God. And we be so ever careful to get our name to praise and honor in all night. This blessing and all other blessings we have, we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Superintendent is coming. <laughs> Praise God. Today's lesson, if you have a book, I mean, if you don't, I know you have your Bibles, is uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 32.
Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. That last verse of Walry. Not for your sakes do I lace, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Amen. Thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about the time of uh, the captivity in Babylon. The people of Israel are not at home. Well, a lot of them are not. I mean, most of them are scattered about. And uh, we're talking about the time in Babylon. So this is the time that we're at. And God is speaking to Ezekiel. So Ezekiel was a priest and a prophet. So in verse 32, God says, Therefore, say unto the house of Israel. So he says, therefore. So that means something must have happened first. Because if you have a therefore, something happened first, then and because of what was either said or had happened before, God wants him to do something as a result of that. So, what had happened? Well, I'll, I'll just read a little bit above this. Uh, in verse 17, starting there, in Ezekiel, it says, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. So I poured out my wrath on them, because they had shed blood in the land, and because they had defiled it with their idols. I dispersed them among the nations, and they were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. And wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name. For it was said of them, These are the Lord's people, and yet they had to leave his land. I had concern for my holy name, which the people of Israel profaned among the nations where they had gone. So he had an issue with the people of Israel. First of all, he had passed judgment on them because they were acting up. Similar to like when they came down from the mountain, uh, when Moses came down from the mountain, they had created the golden calf. Very similar to that, what? They lost their way. They're in Jerusalem, and they're, uh, I don't want to say they're taking granted of, of who they are as God's children, but I think maybe they were a little bit, you know, because they, when things are going good, you tend to put God on the back burner sometimes. Yeah. You know, when things are bad, you cry out to God all the time. But if they're good, and they're good for a while, and things are good, because remember, in these times, there were all kinds of battles going on. That land was given to them, but it wasn't given without a fight. You know, they had to, they had to fight, right? They, that, that land, there were people living in that land, and God had to remove them from that land to give them the land that they had promised. So now they had built a temple, they got the temple in Jerusalem. They're kind of feeling kind of invincible. They're thinking that Jerusalem will never fall. Jerusalem will never fall, they're just by high. And what? Then they lost their way. They start making idols and, and things like that. Disrespecting God. And God had to chastise them. So what? They here they were in their big holy city with the walls and everything like that. Got the temple. So the city will not fall because the temple of God is here. Eventually that city fell. So now they're out. So now they're out. And now what? How is, how is God's name getting profaned? Well, it's getting profaned by the sins of the Israelites. It's also getting profaned by the people that are out there. Like, like it said here in this verse. It said that the, the people are saying, when I talked about in that introduction there, these are the children of God, and yet their God couldn't keep them in their land. You know, they're, they're trying to equate that your God's not that powerful. Your God couldn't keep you in that land. He couldn't even keep you guys in line. Right? So God's holy name is getting made fun of, mocked is the word they use, mocked. You know. So anyway, so that was the therefore. So he says, therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus, thus, I can't tell you that, thus, thus saith the Lord God, I do this, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my 
holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen whither you went. So he's saying, I'm not doing this for your benefit, because you're acting right. Right? Think about it. If somebody's, if your kid's being bad, you don't want to reward them, right? If your kids, you don't, you don't reward bad behavior. So God is saying, look, I'm about to do a thing, but I want you to know that I'm not doing it for your sake. I'm doing it for my holy name's sake. Right? So he says, which you, he goes, I'm doing this for my holy name, which you have profaned among the heathen where you went. You know, think about it. How, how do we how do we profane the name of the Lord? You know, when we're at work, it's a different environment. Do we act the same in church as we do in work? You know, if there's a difference, can in here I can profess that I'm a Christian, right? And I can stand up, and I can whoop, and I can praise God, and I can do all that. But then if I go out to work, and then I'm a different character. Which one is the real me? Right? right. So one of them, one of them has to be the real me. They both can't be the real me. So, so which one is the real me? So if you're really walking in it, and if you're really converted, you're going to be the same in church as you're going to be at work, as you're going to be a giant eagle, as you're going to be out anywhere. Yes, sir. Things like communion. You know, communion 
the act of communion doesn't save us, but it's a sign of what a remembrance for the one who did save us. Amen. 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 So anyway, so God is like, I gotta sanctify my name. I gotta, I gotta clean up my name because of what you all did. He said, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. He goes, I'm going to do this thing so good that not only are you guys going to recognize that I'm God, but the rest of the world is going to recognize that I'm God. Amen. He says, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. What God is saying is, I'm going to sanctify, sanctify my holy name. He goes, the whole world's going to know who I am when I do it through you, the wicked people that you are. Are you following me? Are you following me? He's like, the very ones that they were using to profane the name of God, saying, look at his people, look how his people act. They couldn't even stay in his name. That week, God couldn't even control his people. He said, I'm going to sanctify my holy name through you. By what I'm about to do for you. What I'm about to do for you. So now we have God. God's name needs to be honored. It needs to be respected. It needs to be revered. Um, we have to hold on to that because the world is losing that. The world is losing. There's no reverence for God. There's no reverence for like Sundays anymore, right? We talked about that last week. But there's no reverence. There's no fear of God. They want to take God out of everything. God is like, no, you can't take me out of everything because I made everything. So he says, for I will take you from among the heathen, verse 24. Because now we're talking about restoration. So, so this lesson here, we're talking about the restoration of God's name. Now we're going to talk about the restoration of his people. He says, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. So the very place that they were cast out of, that he sent them out, of the land that he promised them, he said, I'm going to bring you back into your land. I'm going to bring you back into your land. And then what? He says, verse 25, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So he's going to bring them back, and he's going to clean them up. This is very similar to what we have in Jesus, right? We come in a mess. We come in a filthy mess. The Bible says our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And that's what he was talking about here about their righteousness previously in this chapter. Was that they're filthy. You guys are just dirty. Okay, what he's saying is, I'm going to sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols, I will cleanse you. And then verse 26, he says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away that stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. When you think of somebody having a heart of stone, what kind of person is that? A hard person? My heart like stubborn? Right. That's what I kind of think. I mean, I think of somebody, when the Simpsons says somebody has a heart of stone, they have like no love in it. Right? There's no love in it. They're very selfish and stubborn and set in their ways and they're going to do what they want to do when they want to do it and with no regard for anyone else. You know, that's, I'm, that's just me. I'm not saying that's exactly right, but that's just me. Say again. Amen. Amen. All right. He says, a new heart I will give you. He goes, I will take that stony heart out and I will give you a heart of flesh. Go ahead, Adam.
good thing here too, because what else will harden your heart? Think about how the world is. And stuff that you see on TV, just let alone on the news, let alone some kind of crazy TV shows that happen now. A lot of things that were unacceptable are now acceptable. And people don't even bat an eye. Because their hearts have been hardened. Their, 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 their spirits, they're being desensitized. You know what I mean? They, it, it's almost like the, the lines between right and wrong are getting blurred. And it's like people aren't even getting in an uproar about it. You know, when they talk about, you know, the Bible talks about people hardening their hearts. But he's saying, so I'm going to soften that heart back up. So what? So you'll be sensitive. You'll be sensitive to the things that I'm, you know, spiritually sensitive. You know, he's going to give you a soft heart so that you'll be able to, to feel things again and know the difference between right and wrong. And know the things of God versus things not of God. But yeah, the hardening of heart is probably the worst thing. And then in verse 27, he says, And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. What do you guys think about that? He says, he says, I will put my spirit within you. Oh, Amen. I think it was a thing of, of, of future coming, right? Right, the Spirit would come upon him, but it wasn't getting well. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Shelby. Yeah, I do, I do want to elaborate on that. I sure will. I sure will. Because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that caught my eye in this verse. It says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now we know that God doesn't want a bunch of robots just serving. Right? So that's why I was like, well, what does this mean? It doesn't mean that he's going to put his spirit in you and I'm going to make you do what I want you to do. What he's going to do, what he's going to do here, this word here is like to prepare or enable. What he's going to do is I'm going to put my spirit, a new spirit in you, and I'm going to enable you to do the things that I want you to do. What he's going to say is like, it's still going to be a choice. Amen? We have to, but what? He's talking about living by the spirit versus living by the flesh. Right? What he's saying is I'm going to give you the ability to live by the Spirit. Do you follow me? Do you follow me? So what is like, he's not going to make them do it. You're not, he's not creating robots. God doesn't want robots. Who wants somebody? He said, God loves us. Right? He loved us first. And Sister Jack hit it right on the head. This is an act of love. And he's providing a way. Right? Which is what? This is also prophetic of what Jesus, he provided the way. What he's doing is he's giving them a way. I'm giving you a way back. The whole thing here, it's very similar to where we're at with Jesus. We're born into sin. We're sinners. We need a Savior. What he did was he provided a way. He enabled a way for us to what? Be reconciled to him. See, God is holy. Right? That's why he wants his name to be untarnished. Right? God is holy. The only the way that we can get to God is if we're cleansed. And we cannot do the cleaning by ourselves. What he said was, look, I'm gonna, this is highly prophetic. He said, I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to put my spirit in you. What? So then that way you can 
follow, you can, you, you will be able to live by the Spirit and follow my judgments and statutes. So what he's talking about here is so that you can walk in the statutes of God, the things prescribed by God. That's what those are. The statutes are things prescribed by God. These are things that God says He wants us to do. What do you want me to do? Oh, I'm sorry, says You know what? I'm all in this way. You, you can, you can, you can, you can yell my name. Thank you. Go ahead, sister. I, I believe too is saying, you know, when he's talking about judgments, he's talking about keeping God's commandments, and if the Spirit is within you, you also have that ability to obey what God wants you to do, keeping your obedience, staying true to God. You know, the Holy Spirit is sitting there and uh, let you know what you're doing wrong.
when you turn around and look back about where you came from and what God took you out of, right? you got to remember that because I think where we get tripped up is when we forget what God got us out of. Like what, what He saved me from. I remember, I remember when I felt saved, but I remember when I felt rescued. And I'll never forget that. You know what I mean? So I mean, so you got to look back at where you were to know where you are in God now. So that, I think that's the advantage of looking back.
Amen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So to wrap it up, and I'm, I'm going to read uh, one thing and then some more. The verse 32, God's reminding them one more time. He says, not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord, be it known to you, be ashamed and confounded of your own life. Oh, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. What he's reminding them, and what we all need to know, is what God has done for us, we didn't deserve. We didn't deserve. It's by His grace that He's doing this. It's out of His love for us. You said, when you said at the very, very beginning of the lesson, uh, Sister Jack, you said, I see the love in you. That's exactly right. That's what this is. This is an act of love. He's like, I'm not doing this because you deserve it. I'm not fixing this because you, of your righteousness. You know, he's I'm not fixing this because of your righteousness. I'm fixing this because of who I am. I'm fixing this because who I am. I'm the God, the creator, the ruler of all things. I am the God that promised you this land. So I'm going to give you this land like I promised. Right? And he said, and then, what? I'm going, to, I'm going to save you. I'm going to clean you up. Why? Why? What did he say? He said, what? You will be my people, and I will be your God. So he's doing everything that he said he would do. What? Because he's the faithful one. In any promise that he's made, he's the faithful one. He's the one that keeps the promises. Chapter about the filthiness of the Jewish people. We have to deal with the filthy rags. 
you know what you want to do. I want to wrap it up, and I just want to read this because we understand that God did everything for us out of love, and He's done it, and He's done it completely. It wasn't a, a halfway car wash. It wasn't the it wasn't the little five dollar one where you, you know. And this was the ultimate shine. This is everything. It's a complete restoration. You know what I mean? But we have to recognize who did the working. God did the working. But I just want to read this from Paul. This was in Paul's letter to Timothy, 